I'm Whitney James and I'm a sixth year neurosurgery resident. I wanted to talk to you today about what it's like having a family in residency. And I would remind everyone listening out there that um, it was only in the mid 90s that um, we started having equal numbers of women and men um, admitted to medical school. So it's a relatively recent thing to have uh, women in medicine at equal numbers um, to men. That's not to say that men don't have families as well. We all have families, um, maybe, uh, maybe in residency, maybe in medical school, um, maybe after residency, um, and maybe it's just not for you. Uh, regardless, it is an option and it is doable, and I'm here to tell you today that um, despite the many naysayers you might come across, having kids in med school and in residency and as a physician or surgeon after residency is definitely possible. It's not as hard as people like to make it out to be. Um, I think if you and your significant other are both in medicine, um, it can be a little more challenging in terms of scheduling with kids uh, and you need a lot of support. You need a support system surrounding you, either family or nannies um, or a strong community of friends that can um, pick up the slack and your kids from school when needed. So um, the most important thing is just doing what you feel is right for you and your family and not letting anyone um, talk you out of it. So uh, being a neurosurgery resident, uh, I think a lot of people weren't thrilled when I said I wanted to have kids in residency. Um, and I just think it was more based out of a fear of the unknown. How is she going to do this? than um, a reality, a logistical reality. Um, I am married to a wonderful man and um, he actually quit his day job to become a stay-at-home dad when our first son was born in my, the end of my third year of residency. And that was incredible, um, having him willing to stay at home with the baby while I continued um, my surgical duties uh, in the hospital, usually uh, working there 16 hours a day um, and up to 30 hours a day the days I was on call. So um, for us, it worked great. I was happy because I was following my dream of doing neurosurgery and I was in my happy place in the hospital, also able to have a baby at home with my husband who was um, happy taking care of him. Of course, everyone's situation is going to vary, and again, it's all about uh, finding and figuring out what's right for you. But don't be afraid of it. You can definitely do it, and don't let anyone tell you you can't. If you can tell the uh, viewers, what does it take to become a neurosurgeon? Like, how many years does it take? Oh, sure. <laughs> so, um, to go the direct route, you're going to need to either do four years of undergrad and get a bachelor's degree, um, typically in a pre-med program. Um, and some medical schools allow you go, to go straight in to the medical program, getting your bachelor's and a medical degree um, in six years. So you need to do one of those two. Um, after you get, if you go the traditional route and go to a four-year uh, university to get your bachelor's, you need to go to medical school after that. That's another four years, typically four to five years if you do a research year in medical school, um, after which you apply to neurosurgery residency. It's very competitive, so um, typically applicants are getting higher board scores and publishing um, usually in the range of anywhere from 5 to 15 um, 
first author publications prior to their application for neurosurgery residency. Once you get into a program, um, it's a seven year residency, so you'll spend seven years um, in your training period and after the seven years you can choose to do a fellowship and a subspecialty of neurosurgery such as spine or pediatrics or skull-based surgery and um, that's usually one to three additional years after which you can start your own practice. And how much can a neurosurgeon expect to make once you're done with all your training? The median um, salary coming out of uh, residency or fellowship, um, depending on the area of the United States you work in, ranges from 500 to 700,000 mm -hmm. annually. Okay, and any other advice for pre-meds out there that you may be able to give them? My advice is do what you're truly interested in. Um, and what you're really passionate about. That's what's going to fuel you every day and make sure that your work is um, excellent and, um, and also, you know, medicine is a profession and a culture that's evolving and we need you, um, the younger generation, to help us um, propel that culture into the 21st century and, and beyond. And so we need young um, students' ideas and passion and motivation and voice in this profession um, and just never give up. If you'd like to follow me, um, go to girlneurosurgeon.com where you'll find a variety of ideas, um, support pages, and a forum for discussion. Thanks so much.